It's time for an inside look at the most powerful motorsport on the planet. WFO Radio, NHRA Nitro. Hey everybody, welcome back. WFO Radio, NHRA Podcast. We got interviews, baby. We got interviews. Oh, it doesn't stop. We got people out there and uh, we're going to catch up with them. We're going to hear from Sean Langdon. On this week's show, Sean been very active in the iRacing deal. Caps has as well, but Sean's got a rig. And we watched that NASCAR thing the other day and thought it was good. We're going to catch up with Sean, get his take on iRacing or sim racing for drag racing, what it would look like, what he thinks it could it could be, and uh, we'll also talk about his time as a nitro driver, as a driver in general. I want to ask him about his crew chiefs. And how they affected him and what kind of information they gave him along the way. Like which and if the crew chiefs that he has worked with has helped him in which ways. I think it's going to be an interesting conversation. Get a chance to catch up with Sean. Seconds from now, I do want to thank the people who have been longtime sponsors of WFO. And I know some of you guys so you want to avoid all sponsor mentions. But think about it now in the context of what's going on. Uh, these are the businesses that keep our economy rolling, right? Keep things going, and especially in the racing biz. So we want to try to keep them going. So if you have any need for anything that they are offering, uh, think about it. Like, for instance, Marvin Rodak and his coffee and hot sauces and spice robes. I think of the, you keeping him going during this by keeping yourself going with a little coffee in the morning. 817-924-6821. Give Marvin a call. And he does it himself. So he's in, his, uh, he's in the, the, the roastery. He's at Rodax. He's roasting coffee fresh per your order, which is great. MagicDryUS.com, the official organic absorbent of the NHRA. Magic Dry, of course, doing great work with Scott Palmer. Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology, 800-874-2753. Uh, that whole team. We got a new hidden horsepower out, as I mentioned earlier, but really stepping up to support WFO Radio. And, you know, you can't afford to fall too far behind in the projects. This is going to go away soon, so keep the project rolling. Get that engine built so you can go play with it when uh, the time is right. Samtech.edu, 713-683-3817, and Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. The Dragster Adventure, something that is super exciting that you can go on, 866-480-7223. Frank and Lana Hawley, get a license, go on the Dragster Adventure, or plan it out for the end of the year, or whenever you're next available, uh, frankhawley.com. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. All right. Joining us now, NHRA podcast driver for Coletta Motorsports. He's a champ in Top Fuel, a champ in Super Comp. He's won races in Funny Car. By now, you should know we're talking about Sean Langdon. Sean, welcome to WFO. How are you? Well, I'm doing good. Yeah, what's uh, what's your status given these circumstances and trying times we're all dealing with? Uh, my status is I'm going stir crazy. Uh, I'm over sitting at home and uh, reading all the crazy stories about everything going on, but just trying to do my part in, uh, in society and, and just uh, kind of stay calm and try to uh, be safe in the time and just wait for uh, for all this stuff to kind of blow over and get back to racing. Exactly. No, I feel I feel exactly the same as as uh, you just described. Now, you guys, you're in California, right? So you're under an order to uh to what? Shelter at home, stay at home, mandatory social distancing. What are you allowed to do? I don't know. I <laughs> kind of the crazy thing. It's like I don't I don't know what I'm allowed to do. I mean, uh, I, I've, I've gone jogging every day. I've gone for a couple of runs and gone outside just to kind of get out of the house. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as everything else, everything else pretty much shut down, uh, businesses and, uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of stores, is just kind of going just to get your essentials. Um, so there's really not a lot of, you know, a whole lot to do outside, uh, up in the mountains right now. So it's uh, a little bit of snow out. So not exactly golfing weather, but uh, just trying to do the best we can to kind of make it through. Exactly. No, and I think everybody is in the same boat. Uh, fortunately, it's not like uh, and anybody is off having a great time while half of us are uh, stuck. Uh, this is a worldwide thing. You know, they canceled Formula One in uh, in Australia, and that was weeks ago. The Gator Nationals thinking about that, like when it all, I guess that's when the wave kind of crashed on us, that this is a reality and here we are. But since then, though, you know, like here with this podcast, and I'm, 
I'm trying to reach out, trying to just do stuff to stay occupied, right? Organizing things, digging through my old bracket race stuff. But uh, the iRacing thing that NASCAR did, that was kind of interesting. I, I kind of wish we had something we could do on our side. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's something that, uh, you know, I've I've expressed interest uh, or I've expressed my opinions to NHRA the last five or six years on our no max effect podcast. I've uh, made lots of notions about it. Um, and, you know, just a lot of, I think people's take of it is like, you know, hey, it's a video game and video games kind of have a portrayal of, you know, it's either a, a young kid thing or a, a, a lazy thing for people to do. And, but, you know, I think there's a lot of things that kind of come out of it. Um, yeah, I think right now NASCAR has just flat separated themselves from any other forms of motorsports because of their engagement of, of what they've been able to do in the, in the iRacing week. Um, and I know as a kid, there's a lot of things that I did on the NHRA racing game uh, that I learned um, kind of growing through the ranks of, of just how certain things work on, on race cars by playing uh, the the game. Um, I mean, you look at this uh, this I guess i racing uh, game or simulator. I guess that's another uh, debate topic. Is what's the difference of a simulator to a video game? Right. Um, but you know, I know I've gotten pretty heavy into the i racing side, um, and man, I've 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 learned so much. I, I never grew up racing go karts or racing circle tracks or racing uh, road course stuff i was always a, a drag race kid so that's all i knew um so i get this high racing deal and i'm I'm learning all kinds of various forms of of how to drive an indy car of how to drive a uh, uh an arca car how to drive a late model how to drive on dirt um sprint cars um learning how to drive uh uh, Xfinity cars, NAS cars. Um, kind of funny, the other day I got promoted to the next level in the iRacing League and I get in the Xfinity car and uh, once you get up to the B license level, you can start working. Everything's a fixed setup up to that point. But now you can start making changes to your car uh, when you get to the B level. So I was like a few tenths behind, so I called up Slugger Lobby from uh, <laughs> PRD because he used to be a NASCAR crew chief. And I called him up and I said, hey, man, I need a little help. My car's pretty tight. So he says, Die, do this and this and this. And I called him back. I said, man, I can't even touch a gas. The thing will spin out on me. Perfect. All right, now we're going to start working on it. So we probably spent an hour on the phone and he was teaching me, you know, how, how to set up the car and, and what makes it tight, what makes it loose, what everything means. Um, so, I mean, I learned at 37 years old, I've been racing for, you know, 25 years, I learned a whole new side of racing that I never knew my whole life. And uh, I just think it opens up so many things. Um, and then obviously what they were able to do with the iRacing last weekend, um, going live on FS1. Um, you know, I know Caps is a big proponent of, uh, you know, working with NHRA and getting video games. And, uh, you know, I know it, it takes money. It takes money to put yourself in a position like this, but I mean, you know, I, I think, man, it's, if we had an opportunity right now to uh, have a drag race and some type of simulator or game or what have you, um, to be able to race with the fans, I think, you know, there's so many cool ideas of maybe putting races on, having fans race, you know, race their way into the race and be able to race against, you know, us and, uh, you know, have an opportunity to kind of, you know, feel what it's like to, to race against the, the pros, I guess, is, is what you could say. Um, you know, there's just so many opportunities that, that I think are, are good out of it. Um, but, yeah, no, this iRacing deal is unbelievable. Wow. Uh, you called I mean, Slugger I'm, Labby Daytona 500 it. winning. Uh, you got to say Daytona 500 winning crew chief before you say his name, by the way, because, you know, just a statement of fact. But that's. Uh, well, yes. yes. That's, the, <laughs> that's it's hysterical, though, that you can call up Slugger and uh, and start tuning up for the game. But that's the access you have because of TRD, which is great. Yeah, which was awesome. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in, I, I just happened to get promoted to the next level. I go in and I. Uh, they, they were putting on a race at a certain time. And so I just happened to pop in. So I was only able to do like two practice laps going into the race. And 
my buddy was, uh, he was spotting for one of the other drivers that was in that, in that race. So he called me up and he's like, Hey man, I see that you're, you're in this race. And so we were kind of BSing a little bit and he called me after the race and he's like, well, you kind of, uh, you kind of sucked a little bit on that one. And I said, man, my car was so dang tight. I couldn't, couldn't turn. I had to lift so early. And I mean, they were driving it in so much deeper and I could into the turns. And so anyways, after working with Slug- uh, Slugger, I mean, I was able to pick up like, you know, two, three tenths of a second off of my times. Uh, you know, so it's like, there's, it's pretty cool to be able to see the improvements of, you know, just, you know, my driving style and kind of what I like the car to feel like, and then able to make the adjustments where Slugger's kind of able to, he was able to kind of make the car where I felt comfortable racing it. Interesting. Well, I think it's great. I, I do wonder, you know, I played the video games, uh, NHRA games back, PlayStation game. I think it was PS2, maybe in PS1, but uh, that was the one that I played. There was a computer-based game, two PC-based. Um, now things have evolved so much. I'd like to see them try it, but I just don't know. Uh, you know, you know better, but I mean, I've, I've, like, what would be happening in the game? You know what I mean? Like, are people blowing cars up on burnouts? Like, what would be happening in the drag racing game? Like, you're setting, you're setting the clutch. You're, you're going through all these parameters so that the car runs. You're playing crew chief slash driver. Then you go up there and you got to stab and steer. Is it, is it that? Is there more? Have you, have you like thought deeply about it? Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I definitely think that there's, there's, I think having um, a a game that can set it to any standard is, is the games that kind of seem to excel. So if you were to kind of set a game up to where, um, say for instance, you were to, you know, just have a fixed setup um, where you just kind of, in a sense, you're, you're just the driver and you go make runs and I mean you can have all kinds of different modes or settings or you know what have you um you know single player play against your friend go online play against your friends be able to have some type of lobby to where if you guys wanted to race a particular track you could set up and you know have qualifying runs and then do the races but you know also have it set up to where you know for like the more advanced uh person to go in and and be able to um, open up the, the, you know, crew chief side of it to where they can, you know, maybe do some things in the clutch, do some things on the blower, do some things in the motor, you know, be able to mess with a lot of those things. Um, you know, maybe having changing track conditions would obviously be a, a, a big variable that would, I think, kind of make the, the people that really get it excel. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, being able to cut a light stage properly. I mean, you know, I think that there's, in any game that you have, there's there's the obstacles of the people that don't understand what the game is about is going to struggle in it. But I think on the brighter side of it is you take somebody that doesn't get it and then you put them in a video game with minimal to little overhead for that person to where they could be at home. They got a 50 or $60 video game or a simulator or what have you. And they can learn and understand the sport and also build the driver names, build the driver brands, build the sponsor brands, push out more sponsor uh, names. Um, I mean, get it into the household. And I think that's kind of one thing that, that we lack uh, within our sport is, is how do we get into every household? I think this is another way to do that. Um, I mean, you, you look at, you know, you look at like what the eye racing thing has done. I mean, there was, I was on it a week ago and there was 10,000 people on at one time racing. Wow. Now that's, I mean, that's incredible. See, I, I have not, I used to, I built my own rig for PS3 when uh, Gran Turismo was like the jam and uh, I, I loved it. And I learned a lot about driving because they're same, same deal. It's uh, licenses and they teach you the line and braking and whatnot. And uh, I, one day I, I, I played for 11 hours and uh, that that might have maybe had something to do with me getting a divorce. I don't know, but <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I'm I like I'm have not do not have an addictive personality for anything. But I can tell you that I could see myself being totally sucked in by the iRacing, racing, right? Like 
you can tell that it is so much fun and, you know, long races and you feel like you're racing and you, you're in the, the zone and you get that drive. And um, I can imagine I would become addicted to it immediately. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you look at like, uh, you know, what some people may not know is you look at like the uh, iRacing side of things and William Byron, uh, that's how he got noticed uh, through the iRacing. And he's now, he took over for Jeff Gordon's car. Um, you know, a lot of the drivers that race in the NASCAR series also race in, in the, uh, um, in the iRacing series. So it, it, what's kind of neat is that, you know, if you're an avid fan of the sport, you can actually go in and at some point maybe have an opportunity to race against a NASCAR driver. Yeah. And I think that's, that's something that's, you know, that that's your dream. I mean, you, you don't have the opportunity to go out there and race, but Man, it was really cool. I mean, I know when I used to play a little bit of online poker back in the day, you know, I, th- I always thought it was really cool when I'd get in these certain tournaments and I'd play against like their poker pros. And I, you know, do it. I, I just think that that's pretty cool because that's not something you get to do every day is to play or race against the pros. Um, so, I, but I also think that that's some more just, you know, engagement. It's just, it, all you got to do is, figure out a way to get people to create a conversation about your sport and what you're doing. Right. No, um, that's, that's, that's yeah, I mean, true. what about iRacing? racing? You seem connected. Like, first of all, what kind of a rig do you have? Do you have a Denny Hamlin crazy, a uh, hundred thousand dollar rig? I mean, I know the answer to that, but what kind of rig do you have? Yeah. So, uh, actually I got a, a w, WR one, uh, Chad Wheeler. Um, he basically set it all up for me. Um, it was actually funny. Just kind of, happened to stumble across um his his uh, stuff on twitter and uh and i you know caps had told me man this is probably six seven years ago ron caps had said man you need to get into this i racing deal it's pretty cool I was like yeah you know all right yeah yeah but i didn't really think about it but it's like the more i just always hear heard more people talking about it and so it's like you know i kind of i kind of would like to do something because for me, I, I think uh, uh, a sound mind inside of a race car is the best mind that you can have. And I think in order to have a sound mind, you just you always have to be in the race mode and thinking racing and and doing racing. So it's like, you know, I've kind of expanded my uh, my activities from I drive a top fuel car, I go home, I work on the, on my bracket cars, and then I go race my bracket cars. So now I've kind of expanded that in from drive a top fuel car to work on bracket cars when I'm at home to race on my iRacing simulator to go race my bracket cars on the off weekends. So it's just, it's, it's always racing. I just, you know, it's, it's what I do for, for a living and what, what I've done for a living for a long time. So I just kind of think it's more just really just keeping your mind racing the whole time. It doesn't ever turn off. Right. And uh, that makes a lot of sense for whatever it is you're trying to be successful. And if you're full time and everybody else is part time, you're going to get a leg up on them. And uh, no, I think it's neat. I think that what we need to do is like maybe the folks from iRacing are listening right now. I mean, it's not impossible in that we're talking about them and their product. I think that they are the ones, though, that would have to partner with NHRA just because they've got such a great infrastructure already. And just like they expanded with the dirt tracks. Remember, that was like, what was that, three years ago? I remember having a guy on from iRacing, and we talked about the expansion into dirt, and so many people loved that. Um, you know, drag racing, why not? Let's figure it out. Well, yeah, yeah. And I and I think that there's, there's definitely opportunity there, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely think that if you want to expand and excel your sport, maybe you might have to go knock on a couple people's doors as well. Um, so I think that there's, you know, kind of goes both ways on that. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely think that there's, you know, I mean, there's a way to get a, a video game out to, to, you know, be able to, you know, work with some of the, the, the younger kids to kind of bring an introductory into the sport to kind of get them rolling and then, you know, be able to work a little bit more, open it up a little bit more in the, to the eye racing uh, for a little bit of like the the older, um, you know, older kids or, or adults uh, to definitely you know open open the sport up and and expand it and get get more eyes on it, get more people talking about it, 
get more uh, product exposure, sponsorship exposure, and uh, like I said, just kind of keep keep growing it. Yeah, well, we we all need that, and right now it's. Um... You know, I want to I want to stay positive and I want to be positive. And of course, the target date right now to be back racing is Houston. And maybe the maybe that is moving. Um, and even if it gets pushed back a little bit, even if we lose some races due to this uh, you know crisis situation, uh, we'll get back racing at some point. I'm confident about that. And then we're going to have a lot of work to do, obviously, because people are going to be wanting to have. I think pe- my opinion is that people are going to want to have a good time. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be a pent up. Um, like after World War II, everybody was like jubilant after the war was over, right? I think this is a good comparison. When we get through this, whatever it is, I think people are really going to want to go out and, and re-embrace uh, being around people as much as for a long time. Like we don't want to be around people, right? Sometimes there's too many people. Uh, I think if when we can be around people, people are going to want to be around people. And I think that's going to be a new opportunity for us. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I could see uh, you know a few different ways, but you know, I think first and foremost is uh, people are going to want to, uh, you know, take care of their jobs, and obviously with the economy how it's going right now, um, you know, I, I think a lot of the small businesses are are closing down, and, and you know, and hopefully, you know, everybody can do their part to uh, to really help, um, you know, in this time your local small businesses, uh, even if it's just something, um, you know, something is more than nothing, um, to help keep all these small businesses going and keep them alive. You know, obviously it's just, you know, with what we have going on, it's, it's a tough situation because a lot of stuff is out of our control. I think that's the biggest fear in everybody's minds is what you can't control. Um, so, you know, I think after all this stuff is going to go on, I mean, I think there's going to be a, a small little period where, you know, I mean, people have been out of work for a long time. They're going to need to, you know, they're going to want to get their jobs going and get and get, you know, whatever their situation may be. Um, but I think it's, you know, for us working through that and, uh, you know, kind of getting the, the economy to stabilize out a little bit. Um, but, you know, fortunately, you know, and, there, and I think a lot of our sponsors in the racing industry kind of understand the situations are, that are going on. And obviously, we're in some very close talks with NHRA. We're in some very close talks with our sponsors of, you know, how can we kind of keep proceeding on and keep, you know, keep everything going in the time of where everything's really stagnant and nobody knows what direction anything's going to go at this point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, everybody's in this together. Everyone's trying to do their part. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, we'd love to get right back out, um, you know, here in the next couple of months and, and have everything flourish and, and have the stands packed again. Um, but, you know, I think there's going to be a little bit of a time where everyone's going to kind of have to realign themselves and figure everything out. And, you know, when, when people are off of jobs for a couple of months, they're, you know, the first and foremost is you got to be able to pay your bills. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? You got to re, uh, replenish that stockpile of uh, money, get everybody paid. And it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I, I tend to trend uh, positively, and uh, that has been been tough to do. All right, let me change the subject on you, though, Sean. I just want to, you know, I want to use some of your insight. I'm thinking about your bracket race background and winning as a super comp racer. I think about the top fuel and funny car stuff you've done. You've got an opportunity to work with some of the greatest minds in drag racing over the years. And I remember when you first got hired by AJ and it was like top secret and we got to have you on and, and just, you've, you've really been able to have some close proximity to some of the really great thinkers in our sport. So this is kind of like a a broad ranging question. Um, You know, the crew chiefs, the people, the people you've worked with, the people you've dealt with, the people you've been around, like who has, uh, who's left positive impressions on you? Like, give me some insight into what uh, these people have in common you know what I mean? Do you, you've been able to be connected to the most successful people in drag racing in many ways. And I'd like to learn a little bit from your experience. And it doesn't have to be like an Alan Johnson type. It could be someone that you encountered uh, as a super comp racer. You know, throughout your career, there's always people who help you along the way and they give you knowledge and they give you understanding and they help you get to the next level. Like Slugger did with the uh, the iRacing, right? He like helped you 
get to the next level. Uh, talk a little bit about some of those uh, elements that have made these people successful, and if there's one or, or another that has really helped you along the way, let tell us about them. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've definitely had um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of positive uh, you know, interactions with with every crew chief that I've had. Um, I mean, I've been able to take a, a little bit away from from every single one. Um, yeah, I've been able to work with some of the the best crew chiefs out there. Um, you know, like starting off when I was with Lucas and working with John Stewart, and you know, he's Stewie's been out there since he was a kid, and I learned a lot from him. Um, you know, on the driving side, I, I learned a lot from him at at a really important age um, when I first came into uh, to Top Fuel when I was, uh, I guess, 20, 26 years old, 27 years old, and just a lot of, uh, a lot of, I guess, kind of life, uh, life things, and and um, just you know how to how to kind of be smart with money and how to invest money and. And there, so there's a lot of things that outside of the racing that I learned uh, from from him, um, and, and so it was really kind of a good good start for me in, in in that. And then, you know, obviously working with Alan, I worked, I learned, I mean, probably uh, you know one of the the greatest guys that I had to work with, and um, you know, just so many things from from top to bottom. You know, I remember my second ever race with him of of uh we went to phoenix and completely pedaled the car terribly and had the car pretty sideways and and uh you know was able to to hold it together and i guess when you're inside of a race car you, you feel like you have control so you know it was a little out of control and it was a little aggressive on how i pedaled it and it was pretty sideways but uh obviously outside of the car it looked a lot worse so we get back to the pit and, uh, and I walk in, in the lounge and Brian Hughes was there and, uh, and he didn't really say a whole lot to me. I was kind of like, well, you know, I didn't really want to kind of poke the bear on it because I knew I didn't really do a good job, but I was kind of, I guess, more looking for the comforting side of like, Hey man, we'll get him next time. Well, I learned really quick with Brian and Alan, like you're there to win. You're not there to, Hey man, you did, you did your best. And, and that's all that really counts. It's like, no, you're, you're hired to win races and we're here to win races. We're here to dominate. We're here to win every race that we go to. And so I'm, I'm kind of sitting there like expecting Brian to say something. Doesn't really say nothing. And all of a sudden you hear the, the, the middle door in the, in the hospita- hospitality area, wham, slam shut. And Brian looks back at me and finally says something and, he goes, oh, that's not good. And I said, oh, what's that? And he said, yeah, Alan's probably coming to talk to you. I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> and he comes in and he says, get your ass in my trailer. <laughs> we need to have a talk. And I was like, oh, okay. So uh, he, he says, you know, basically sat me down and says, have you ever been taught how to pedal a race car? And I said, well, no, not necessarily. I said, I just... If it smokes the tires, you get off of it. If if it feels like it's hooked back up, then you get back on it. And he goes, "What you did out there was the worst driving job I've ever seen." And he goes, "This is this is the what you did." And he basically sat me down. We sat in there for a long time. And he sat me down. And he says, "This is how you pedal a car. This is what the feel is going to feel like. This is what you got to do." This is why the car smoked the tires. This is, here's the motor, here's the drive shaft. This is what you have to do when you're trying to break the motor away from the clutch. And, you know, this is different things of all these, you know, I guess things I've never really, I was really one track minded in my first couple of years. I didn't really know. I just smoked the tires, you lift. And then you get back on it at some point. But he really kind of explained it and broke it down into like a science form of like, where I really understood a lot more of it. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of things like that with Alan where it was, you know, I, I learned a really in depth, um, I guess about a lot of different things, uh, uh driving the car. Um, uh, you know, so obviously work with Alan was, was, was great. And, uh, working with Brian, he's you know, Brian and I were still good buddies to this day. And, um, 
But yeah, and then went over to Schumacher and working with Phil Schuler and Todd Okahara. I mean, both of them were awesome crew chiefs. You know, Phil is a Phil and I we got along real well just because of a lot of the outside racing that Phil does and the outside racing that I do. So we kind of had a little connection there. On um, you know, he just we both just love drag racing and and uh, you know Todd Okahara was awesome to work with. He was you know just he's he's real. Um, his passion that he has and he's like you know real in depth on everything and and uh the cool thing i liked about him was he was an open notebook so there was a lot of times that i really just kind of went to the races and you know he let me look at the race pack and he would explain things to me and so i kind of started to understand a little bit more of what was actually going on in in, in the race car um that i i guess i i never really had questions for before so there's a lot of things that he kind of opened my eyes to as far as actual the workings of the car and, and what what was, uh, you know, just more of like tune-up related stuff. So, you know, that was pretty cool working with him. And then obviously going over to um, working with uh, Connie Coletta was, I mean, Connie's awesome. You know, he's a legend and he's got so many stories. And Connie, man, he just, if you can talk drag racing, he'll be your best friend. You know, he just, he loves it so much. And it's so awesome to see, like, when he's out at, you know, even though he's he's out there and, you know, he's he's kind of cruising around his golf cart and this and that. But, man, you get talking to him about racing, the guy is so sharp. It's unbelievable. It's awesome to see. Uh, it's awesome to, uh, you know, just working with him. And, and there has been a lot of things that, that I've talked to Connie about as far as driving the car and some things that, um, you know, that he, he would tell me that, you know, he, like he always talks about very highly of Scott and how good Scott was at pedaling a race car. So there's a lot of things that he shared with me of things that he taught Scott throughout the years. Um, so it's, it's really cool working with him and hearing his stories and how he drove the car and how he taught Scott to drive and how Scott drove and then he kind of, you know, we talk about a lot of that stuff and, you know, working with him and, and Rob Flynn the first year. And, you know, Rob was, again, an open notebook. So I got to learn so much with Rob um, as far as certain things on the car and some cool things that we we learned is um, with the reaction times and how to pick the car up reaction time wise. And, and uh, so it was good working with him and, you know, and then go over to the funny car and it's all kind of wide open and working with Tommy Delago is one of the, the best crew chiefs out there and working with him and Nicky Bonifani. And I mean, Nicky's just the dude, <laughs> he's comedy. He's, he can tell stories all day and keep, the, keep the mood light. You know, he's just, he's, but he, he's awesome to work with. He's, he's probably one of the, the funnest crew chiefs. Um, and then working, you know, having Kurt Elliott come over, working with him and working with him again this year. Um, but then working with Dell, uh, Dell and I had a great relationship. Um, you know, I learned so much from Dell. I just, the thing I liked about Dell was Dell, it's just, he's kind of, he comes in, he's kind of your buddy, right? So you don't really feel like really dumb asking <laughs> Dell any, any question. And there's sometimes I felt like I was asking some dumb questions, but he would answer them. And, and I kind of really felt like with Dell, I had a, a pretty good relationship where, um, he, he, he helped me a lot driving a funny car, uh, when I really kind of felt like I was struggling. Um, but you know, he just try this, try that, you know, do this, do that. And, and I just kind of give him feedback and we just kind of start working on things. And so I guess it's kind of a long drawn out, but man, I've really a long drawn out answer to your question, but I've really just every crew chief I've worked with, I've, you know, it's been a pleasure working with, and, and I've learned so much from every single one of them throughout the years. No, that's, well, that's what I wanted, actually. You gave me exactly what I wanted because uh, just I've been thinking about, you know, our sport in, in, a, in maybe a more broad, broad context and just like you're one of the guys who have done everything for the most part. And even your time in super comp, right? Like I, I call a lot of super comp races and I watch those guys out there and it's really hard. And I don't think people appreciate it for you to have been a back to back world champion. Like that's, that's the spark that got you to where you are now. And uh, you clearly take a lot out of uh, every relationship. So thank you for giving us that, uh, you know, start to current in terms of your career. And I hope uh, people are, you know, absorbing information from the people there around as well, because that's, that's how you get it. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of, uh, in in our world, I mean, I just try to be a sponge and, and uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to be able to have the opportunity, you know, from, from the start of, like you said, when the, the two super comp championships and, and, you know, Forrest Lucas and Morgan Lucas calling me up and saying, you know, Hey, we'd like to give you an opportunity to drive a top fuel car because, uh, you know, we feel like you did a good job in the super comp category. And, you know, it was just, um, you know, being able to surround myself with a very successful businessman like Forrest Lucas, and then, you know, very successful businessman like, um, Alan Johnson, and then very successful businessman with Don Schumacher. And then working with a very successful businessman like Connie Coletta. And, you know, fortunately for me, I mean, even to this day, I, I get along, um, have great relationships with every one of those men. And, uh, you know, when I when I talk to those guys, I, I always just make sure I just be a sponge. I mean, they're successful for a reason. They've been around the sport this long for a reason. Um, so I just, man, I'm open ears with them. I listen and I shake their hand and yes, sir. And you know, I just try to take in as much as I can because, uh, you know, I, I hope I can be around the sport for, for as long as they have been. Absolutely. Well, you need to start a bit, very successful business, Sean. Like, you've got all the uh, the backup, right? Like, you could ask any kind of question. Langdon needs to build something. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, you know, at this point, it's a, it's a time thing, and that's my excuse. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I have some some little things on the side that I, I do, uh, you know, business wise. Um, I'm mostly kidding. You know, just by kind the of way. Some, you know that I'm mostly, some, some, I'm some, mostly kidding. Yeah. But just, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of like a, a time thing. So, you know, there's some things that I kind of, you know, I'll branch off a little bit with here and there and, you know, kind of just gain some more knowledge, um, about, but, you know, I'm sure kind of once the, the chapter starts to slow down on the, the top fuel stuff, I'll probably start to, branch out something more you know in, in those lines but i definitely try to keep a, as much time open as i can you know obviously with the, my racing career there you go okay real real quick uh rob flynn is going to be on later this week at some point and uh you know rob and i have talked many times but i've never had him on the show just you know crew chiefing crew chiefing stories i know he worked for gwen back in the day so i'm uh soliciting uh any stories that i should hit him with like tell me about this do you have anything that uh, would fit that bill? Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, man, Rob, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm kind of on the spot now. So. Yeah, no, I put you totally on the spot. I I did that, uh, but I figure, you know, strike while uh, the iron's hot. You were just talking about him. And he's kind of a quiet character, you know, right? Never, but not really. Yeah, yeah, I never really had any any crazy stories uh, with with Rob. Um, I mean, you know, Rob, Rob, he's a great guy. And I mean, but you know, he, he comes in, he comes into work. I, I mean, I'm sure he's, he's got stories for, for, for days of, of all the teams that he's worked with. I mean, he's worked with some of the, the greatest minds in the sport. And, um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I never really had too many, I have to think of off the top of my head, never really had too many crazy stories with, uh, with Rob. Trying to think. I'm sure I'll come up with something as soon as I hang up the phone. But You just text me with those. You know who will is Daryl Gwynn, and I'm going to hit him up uh, very soon, so don't don't worry. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. speaking of that, yeah. isn't it amazing the uh, the guys that have been involved with the sport and the staying power? Like, once you're in this thing, you're in it forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's obviously, you know, great to see um, – some of the uh, the stuff that they do with you know the, the legends and the legends tour and um, you know I, I, it's pretty cool to me you know guys like Daryl Gwynn and and you know he comes out to the races and and uh, Don Perdome and um, you know Ed McCola and you know it just it, it's cool for me because I mean these are the guys that when I was a kid I was going to the races and I'm just in so much awe of these guys and was blown away when I could get an autograph from these guys. And, and, um, so it's like now, I guess at this point, you know, my career and, you know, um, you know, like what days more comes over and talks to me and, you know, we just create conversations and it's, I don't know, it's weird to me. It's kind of, it's really super weird. Just the fact of these guys come over and they even really know my name and it, it's, 
and we have just great conversations and talk about, you know, their past racing and talk about my racing. And, um, uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool to see, man. It's just, uh, you know, those, those are the days that I really think it kind of 180s me real quick and, and quickly puts me back from, you know, I'm a driver in the sport to I'm a fan again in the sport. There you have it. Sean, I appreciate you taking the time. Not like you're doing much else. Nobody is. But uh, spending time with us here on WFO, our listeners um, learned a lot, first of all, in this conversation, whether it be about iRacing or, uh, you know, the, your, your driving background, number one. But uh, I, I hope we get back out there as soon as is possible. I wish you the best of luck in the season. I'm really hoping we can complete a strong full season, right? Maybe a compressed schedule, something like that. We don't know exactly how it will all go. But uh, we're all in it together. And uh, Nomex Effect, you got one coming out soon. What else are you going to do with that? Uh, well, we'll see. We've got, uh, we got some things that we're talking about, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We've got, we got all the stuff there. It's just a matter of firing it up and uh, seeing what we can talk about and get away with and not in trouble for. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. There you go. Well, Sean, thank you very much. Good luck to you this year. Appreciate the uh, the insight into your career, and I think I'm going to go get uh, myself an iRacing rig. Definitely something to be doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sean. Sean Langdon with us here on WFO. They got an Omex effect coming up real soon. I, I think that's a smart move. Everybody's creating content now, baby. Everybody's creating content. I'm super uh, eager to be part of it. That's one thing. Is everybody's on the same page here. We want to move on and we want good things to happen and we want what's best for our friends and neighbors in america and we're just trying real hard that's it now what i'm going to do is go organize something i don't know what it is just yet i'm going to organize something though i'm going to find something that has yet to be organized in my house office uh the office is tough i got to like 90 percent and the final 10 percent is such a challenge maybe i'll go do that right now hopefully you're all well watch out my twitter feed wfo joe and wfo radio I'm still posting on there, the Facebook, the Instagram, uh, and watch the WFO Radio Facebook page. Why? Well, I'm going to do uh, Facebook Live at some point and just have a live conversation with live people out there, see how it's going. And uh, that is all. Hopefully you are doing well. And keep it rolling. Keep it locked. Stay tuned. Stay subscribed. Never miss a show. Hidden Horsepower, Factory Stock Podcast, and, of course, WFO. Thanks to Sean Langdon and all of you listeners out there. Really appreciate you. This is WFO Radio. I love WFO Radio. Oh, yeah. The views and opinions of the hosts, guests, or callers do not necessarily reflect that of the station ownership, advertisers, or agencies. Attention adrenaline junkies, Frank Hawley's Dragster Adventure is calling you. Rides available for the 2020 season. Go to frankhawley.com. They're coming to a track near you. It makes a great gift, whether it be licensing for super comp, super gas, all the way up to top alcohol. They can do it. But if you're a drag racing fan and you've always imagined what it might be like to drive a dragster to accelerate zero to 60 in three seconds and run tens in the quarter mile, give them a call. 866-480-7223. FrankHawley.com. The Dragster Adventure. And tell them you heard it on WFO. You're working in the shop, you've got spills, you've spilled oil, it's everywhere, what are you going to do? I know what you're going to do, but that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to go to MagicDryUS.com and order the official organic absorbent of the National Hot Rod Association, Magic Dry. It's lighter, it absorbs more, it's better for the environment, it's made out of coconut, it's made in America. MagicDryUS.com, they've got spill kits that include everything you need for a regular, normal household spill, all the way up to a large industrial spill. We always say, if you've got a cat, Get CatSpot. If you've got a shop, if you've got a factory, if you've got a spill, call Magic Dry. That's MagicDryUS.com. Start your education at full speed with the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. Accelerate your career as a high-performance engine builder with classroom instruction and practical hands-on experience in the lab, on the dyno, and at the track. In addition to the block, head, and CNC programs, Sam now offers motorsport, EFI tuning, and an Associates of Applied Science degree. And Sam is a military-friendly school, approved to train veterans and other eligible persons under the GI Bill. 
Start your education at full speed. Go to samtech.edu today. We're talking gourmet coffee. We're talking hot sauces. We're talking spice rubs. We're talking everything good at Rodax Coffee and Grills.com. Marvin Rodak, been doing it since the 70s, figured out that life is better with great coffee. And oh, he's so right. 817 924 6821. Call Marvin. He'll roast up some coffee fresh for you. Throw in some hot sauce, some spice rub, and you will be loving it. Hit them up, Rodax, coffee, and grills.com. Hey, engine builders, Total Seal Piston Rings are the leader in ring seal technology, and they go out of their way to help their customers and will make custom sets for any specific piston you might have. Customer service, top notch, made in America, Absolutely. They're located in Phoenix, Arizona, and they've got everything it takes to develop the world's best piston rings. Give them a call at 800-874-2753 or go to TotalSeal.com. Hey, this is Kathy Fisher. Join Joe Costello and myself every Sunday morning on Motor Trend for Performance TV, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. This is WFT. 